Twitter stuff sent out. Let's get our bots set up and end with Discord. <laughs> All right, I think we are good. So, hello everyone, this is Chris Ingerson, and it is March 1st, and this is the March 1st Text Quest dev stream. So, uh, today we are going to be working on tools. I have a couple of cleanup jobs that I need to do on TextQuest. I need to search through um, for unused scripts, or rather, scripts that don't need to be used anymore and should be deleted, but I haven't because I'm paranoid that they're actually being used somewhere. Um, so we're going to be doing a bunch of tooling today to help me find dependencies, to help me uh, also do some timeline-specific stuff, because uh, there are some... Uh, how, to, how to phrase it, there are some quality of life things that I would like to do, um, and I've never really experimented with the timeline editor stuff, so this will be somewhat interesting, um, <laughs> or at the very least, something something new. Uh, it's not something that we've ever really done, so um, first things first, I would like to start with a nice and simple dependency tool. So inside of Unity, you can actually, let me find the one that I'm actually interested in. Inside Unity, you can uh, right-click on an asset and say Select Dependencies. And you'll notice that it didn't highlight anything for Discovery Trigger, and that could be because I've actually fixed all of my stuff and it's not actually being used. Um, but let's go ahead. Oh, look at that. They have Find References and Scene. That's interesting. They didn't used to have that. Okay. So I actually might not need to do that part of it. Um, so you can see Find References and Scene. We just find that right there. Hmm. Well, that's a nice thing that I didn't know actually was added. I don't know how long that's been there. I've always done select dependencies. <laughs> well, uh, let's see. I might not need to do that tool. then. Uh, I was planning on doing a kind of more built-out find dependencies tool. Um, that would allow us to search for specific assets. Uh, that might still be fun to do anyway. So... But I actually, you know what? Let's let's shift gears to uh, to the uh, timeline stuff first, then, since Unity has actually a pretty decent uh, selection of dependency tools now. <laughs> huh? I wonder how long that's been there. Anyway, uh, so one of the things that I would like to be able to do is oh, and you know what? Before I forget, we're going to be coding, and we're going to throw in the miscellaneous because we're kind of going to be doing miscellaneous things today. Uh, so one of the things that I would like to be able to do is in timelines, maybe not that timeline. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it would be nice to be able to right click on a, a clip and tell it to do something specific. In fact, what I would like to do here is have a option to um, like make the clip as long as the cutscene itself. Um, and this is mostly useful for things like uh, if we go to, let's say, the wizard appears thing. Um, if we have objects that are active during the entirety of the cutscene, it's really nice. It's it's kind of annoying to have to constantly manually drag this around. It would be nice to just be able to right click and say, make full size or mm, probably something better than that. Uh, that would basically make the clip last as long as the dur as the entire duration of the timeline. Um, it's a small thing, it's nothing really life-changing, but it's certainly something that will make your life a little bit easier uh, because you won't have to manually size it. And then uh, the worst is when you have to do something like this. Um, let's say that I had it down to here at 390. Um, if I was to try and get it up to, I think it's 420 is my limit here. You have to kind of precisely stop at 420 because if you go, it's, it's very easy to start dragging past it and not really be sure that you're on the accurate frame. Um, it's not too bad on short timelines like this. I mean, 420 frames is not really that that long. That's only what uh, barely over. That's that's basically uh, seven seconds. Um, but for longer ones, timelines that are like 5,000 frames long, it gets a lot more difficult to do smaller increments. Because, for example, you'll be moving out way more per uh, per uh, drag. Hello, Dustin Ham. Welcome back. How you doing tonight? So, yes, some, some nice quality of life uh, timeline tools would be nice, and we're going to go ahead and do that. Okay, so I have never done timeline editor scripting before. 
I mean, beyond editor scripting for, well, I guess I've technically done tracks, um, but I've not done actual context commands. So this is going to be interesting because um, I'm not entirely sure what, what to do with it. Um, I do know that it's going in common. Let's go ahead and collapse some of this. Collapse you. Uh, we're going to go to timeline. All right. We're going to create a new folder. And we're going to call this, I guess, utility. Doing all right. Hoping to get some work in, so I'll probably be lurking mostly. All right. Perfectly fine. How are you doing tonight? I am doing so-so. Uh, first of the month is always a exciting and expensive time, right? Because you get paid, but also you got to pay everyone else. <laughs> uh, so, eh, I'm doing all right. We'll see, as always, how, how tonight's dev stream goes. Uh, I'm going to make a new C Sharp script, and I'm going to call it Timeline Utility. I will also be incredibly impressed if, if this is as straightforward as I would like it to be. But I'm willing to bet that it's not. So let's open up Timeline Utility, assuming that it wants to. All right. So this is going to be uh, first up, I guess, in the time common.editor namespace. Um, and second, we are going to want to... This is basically going to be a static class that will allow us to do specific timeline uh, context commands, assuming that that's possible. <laughs> so I'm going to say using unity engine dot timeline, using unity engine dot playables. And I'm just curious if using unity engine internal has anything else. Nope. Okay. So we're going to try to get this to do what we want and I have no guarantee that it will be possible. Uh, okay. So First things first, we're going to have a public static static void. Uh, let's go ahead and say, I don't want to say call it reset. Uh, what would be a good term for this? Uh, so this is going to be the context command for us to uh, set a clip to be the entire duration of a timeline. Um, I guess we'll call it set clip to time. Oh, wow. Capital T. Timeline duration. That's a terrible name, but we'll stick with it. Uh, and then we're going to go ahead and say, I believe we can't do context command because that just gives us the gear. We don't want that. Instead, we want this to be, um, I think we want it to be a menu item. Oh, right. I also need to be doing editor stuff. <laughs> Duh. Uh, so we're going to say using Unity Editor. And using Unity Editor. Dot, do they have timeline? Oh, it does. What about playables? Unity Editor. Dot, playables. New. Okay. So I th think we're good there. Uh, so we want this to be a menu command. Uh, so we're going to say. This is also going to be interesting. Because um, I want it to be under assets, but maybe I have to tell it to be timeline. Uh, for now, I'm going to show you a real quick thing called a validation function, um, which is basically a way for you to create context specific commands based on what the thing you clicked on is. Um, so this is going to be for the default assets. It's not going to be for timeline specific, um, but it should be similar, assuming that we can find out how to do it for timeline. Uh, so we're going to do assets, uh, I think create and then we'll just call this test. Okay. So I come down here, let that compile. I should be able to click in the project view now and then right click and uh, underneath that should be a test uh, option. That'd be the menu item that we just set up. Once that compiled, of course. <laughs> oh man. Yeah, I need to do a cleanup pass on a couple of old scripts that I've written. Um, things that I kind of laid out the initial plans for, and then I just never got around to actually finishing them up. Uh, for example, the music triggers that we worked on a while back still can only target um, bools when they really need to be able to target multiple things like ints and floats and all that. Anyway, so let's see if I can find it. Here we are. So you can see we have a, 
element called test here, and if I click on it, nothing would happen because nothing actually does happen with that. We haven't coded anything to happen. Um, but I can also go ahead and right click on the actual script itself and say test. But if I want to create a validation function, I can do this. Um, so we're going to say public static bool is text asset. We'll go ahead and say a menu item. It's going to be the same. It has to be the same path. And then underneath that, we're going to say uh, is validate function. So true. And now if we say uh, we're going to want to do something like uh, return selection dot, I think it's object or active object. There we go. Is text asset. Okay. So now when we let that compile, if I click anywhere, um, I will still have the option for test, but it will be grayed out. I won't be able to do anything with it. But if I right click on a text asset, so something like a script or a text file, uh, then tech, then test will actually be selectable. I guess I should actually just go ahead and throw in a debug.log test so that we can click on it and show you what I mean. And of course I have different line endings because somehow, even though I changed those files manually myself, it still thinks that they're mixed line endings. Uh, I wonder if that means that Unity just like force recompiles them. That'd be annoying. Hmm. Well, in any case. All right. So if I right click on tracks and go up to create, you'll see that test is now grayed out. Can't click on it. Um, but if I go to timeline, create, boom, there's a little test output. So that's, that's what a validation function does. It basically allows you to contextualize what you want things to do. Um, so we need to figure out how to get this to function with, with respect to um, timeline. That's going to be interesting because I have not done that before. Um, I'm assuming that it's possible. All of their all of their editor stuff is technically accessible somehow. It's just a question of getting to it. Um, so, hmm, I wonder what we can do with this. Worst comes to worst, we might end up decompiling some of their DLLs, uh, which I really hope I can do on on air. I feel like they wouldn't care because they actively encourage people to do that, so probably it's fine. Um, okay, so I'm assuming I want to actually, let's see, is there a, there's not a timeline option up here. So, <laughs> what would be the way to go? Um, i trying to think if there's something I can do to aid with this. No, 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 no. Uh, maybe I need to use Unity Editor internal. Is there something I can do there? No, okay. So let's go ahead and uh, the timeline stuff. Um, playables. I we might actually end up debugging, well, decompiling one of their DLLs in a little bit. Um, but I'm going to try to take some blind stabs at it to see if I can get it. Um, so I guess logically we would probably do something like lead with timeline, I would think. Um, cause this is the main thing is I want to look for editing, reset editing. Hmm. Okay. So if we do something like timeline, Assets. I'm also going to comment that out. I don't need a validation function yet. We just need to figure out if we can right click on a timeline thing. Um, so if we get this wrong, nothing really will happen. But uh, the main thing that will happen is when we right click, we won't be able to see anything. Like we won't see, an, see our test case uh, because, well, the path wasn't correct. Um, so actually, after making that change, if I try to right click in the assets or in the project folder, um, I shouldn't actually be able to do anything with test because it's just gone. Basically, it's not following the correct uh, path. Uh, so if I go over to create, you'll notice that it's gone. And if I'm really lucky, it would... <laughs> I didn't expect that to be that easy. Um, that would have been nice. Uh, okay. So this is going to be fun. 
So uh, I'm going to decompile some of Unity's DLLs live. We're going to take a look at this. I probably should also navigate to that. Okay. Oh, probably can't show that. I was looking at visual scripting stuff too to figure out how they uh, how they handle themselves. All right. So, oop, wrong one. Oh no, that's the right one. We're gonna navigate real quick to some of Unity's DLLs. Figure out what is going on there. Go to Unity Hub. Oop, wrong thing. Right. It's under Unity, then your Hub, Editor, blah blah blah. Okay. Now this is gonna be interesting. I need to look for timeline dot. DLL, I'm guessing. Hmm. All right, then. Uh, we want to open file location. Go ahead and drag that in here. See what we can get. Okay. It would be really nice if I could look through it to find what I want. Timeline inspectors. Ooh. Aw. Oh, that's not really that useful. Hmm. Timeline utilities. Key traverser. Nope. Editor internal. Binding tree view. GUI tree view. Timeline. Auto track drawer. Track type. We probably want the editor stuff, actually. Oh, and that's good. That's what we got. Um, timeline analytics. Presumably we want... The, whoa! Okay, that's probably what we want. Uh, da, 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 da. If I were a betting man, where would I put this stuff? Not there. Hmm. Editor, find source asset. Item action. This is actually useful because you'll note that when we right click here, we have that option, find source asset. So that means we're actually close to what we want. So we want to go to item action. Then. Item action. It's internal because of course it is. Menu item action base. Is that a default Unity one, or is that one for this? That is one in here, and of course it's internal again! Sorry, I get very aggravated when Unity makes its stuff internal, because it makes it very hard for me to do anything with it. Freaking ridiculous. Uh, let's see, get actions of type. Uh, okay. So, I can't really anything with this, can I? Hmm. Yeah, I, I know. I know I can do reflection, but I I just get so frustrated that they that they isolate stuff like that. It doesn't even make sense for them to do it because they're clearly things that are meant to be derived from, uh, but they just prevent you from getting to it for some reason. Just because, I guess. Uh, and I hate having to dig into reflection to derive from something. I've never actually even done that. I don't even know if that can... I mean, I guess you could. Jeez, that would be a mess. Um, but yeah, the problem is that I might need to derive from something specific. I really hope that's not the case. That'd be stupid. Um, let's see. Is hidden in menu... Okay, so let's, what are my other options here? I can, let's go to something called Reset Editing. Let's see if that's a thing. Reset Clip. I think that is an option. Um, I think I can right-click on that, and there should be like a Reset Clip somewhere. Huh. Weird, I remember seeing that at work today. Apparently not. Okay, uh, let's go for Tile. See, tile, tile, tile. Okay, it's an item action. Again, it's an internal thing, which does not help us at all. Uh, execute clip modifier or clip modifier. Tile dot cast. Let's go to item action, and well, we probably will end up needing to go to menu action, um, and see if there's anything referencing item action that I can use without having to do reflection. Um, See, item action is an internal class. Derive types. So all of these seem. 
Ooh, here we go. Add to menu. This might be useful. Timeline window, the timeline state. Hmm. And there's a shortcut option too. Hmm. Mm hmm. Hmm. And what about I timeline item? Am I going to be very upset? Apparently not. Why can't I find I timeline action? Or I timeline item? Uh, <laughs> oh, it's Unity Engine? Oh, oh it's under Unity Engine, not timeline item. Okay. And what about you? Are you anywhere I can get to you? Mm, nope. But it might be something that actually, let's go ahead and go back here. Let's go to runtime here. And we're gonna try Unity Engine, not Timeline. Let's see if I can get something useful. Uh, Cause maybe the editor stuff is more locked down, but if we're lucky, the runtime stuff will not be as bad. Okay, so we have I, Timeline item. Yep. Nope. <laughs> uh, what are you gonna do? Um, Hmm. Hello, Jacob Shrimp. How are you doing tonight? Also, welcome back. I am. I am using that. We're looking at Unity's uh, timeline editor DLLs because I need to do some timeline editor stuff, and I'm not sure how to do it. So I want to figure out how to do it. Um. My main interest is here, add to menu. And I'm wondering where it's getting referenced. And I probably do not have a good way of checking that. And I really don't want to have to use reflection on this because I'm terrible at reflection. I still don't quite have a solid grasp on it. And I would look very stupid if I tried to do that on the stream. <laughs> it's still kind of a weird thing for me. Um, also, good God, really? This is how they're handling things? Jeez, of course. Okay. <laughs> so we have a menu. We're getting called at to menu. Hmm. What can I... Let's go look at... Well, I don't want to do... I feel like this is, well, no. Mm. Hmm. All right, let's go to reset clip again. Execute. No, we're not getting much here. Category, though. Editing. Display name. Reset editing. Hmm. Now, I'm willing to, I'm willing to bet that yeah. But this is all internal stuff, and we can't really hook into it unless we do reflection. Uh, I'm going to be so mad. I hate doing that. <sighs> yeah. Yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. But, oh, this is interesting. Timeline clips derive from timeline items. What derives from timeline clips? Nothing. And it is also an it's a public class. It's not an internal one. Can I get away with using this? No, this is the actual class used to set up timeline stuff. Boo. Boo boo boo. Mm -hmm. Uh, then again, no, that won't work. I need it to be st static, right? Um, let's go up to Unity Editor Timeline. Uh, t -t 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 trim End. Hmm. No, I guess it can just be a regular class. Item Action is not static, right? It's just abstract. Okay. Um, hmm. And it derives from timeline item so yes i think i can get away with that okay um and we can also apparently do categories by using the category attribute 
I'm going to actually test that out. I'm kind of curious. Uh, so I, I don't think I can do it this way. I don't need to do it through a static class. Instead, I guess I need to... That's super weird. I guess I need to right-click and then basically do this. So these aren't static classes. They're just regular regular classes. Really? That's super weird. Okay. Um, well, let's try it. So we're going to create a new C-sharp script. And we're going to call it... Um, they just call it that reset clip. Uh, I guess we'll call it fill clip because we want it to fill the entirety of the uh, length of the uh, of the timeline. Let's go ahead and open that up. Yes, yes. Okay. Uh, so this is going to derive from. Oh, we're going to need to say using uh, Unity. Engine, I believe, dot timeline, and then using Unity Editor dot timeline just to be safe. We want this to derive from what is it? Timeline clip. Ooh, timeline manage. Oh, that's mine. <laughs> False alarm. Um. Okay, so I guess we'll call it timeline clip. It's kind of awkward. Um. I mean, that doesn't seem right. Hold on, let's go over here. Okay, uh, let me check out the item action again. Because this, this seems odd. It, it seems like it's... It seems like here for item action, that specifies what its validation is. Um, let's go back here to, or to item action. Uh, t -t -t where T derives from I timeline item, which all clips derive from. And what do we do? Execute is abstract. Okay. And hmm. Well, then this is going to be interesting. Uh, I may, I may actually uh, pull some of the. Uh, some of the viewers and ask for some uh, reflection help because I'm not really I'm not really sure if I can do what I'm going to need to do. I've never done. Can you do reflection to derive from something? No, that that won't that won't work because that would try to get around internal entirely. Well, but I guess that's the point of reflection. No, no, no. Uh, t would they have really locked it down this way? Surely there's a way to get at this without having to do reflection. Um. Because I don't think that deriving from timeline clip is going to be correct. Uh, I will say try using Unity Editor internal, except that's not a. There is no like timeline internal. Ugh, annoying. Um, I guess. Well, mm, I might be able to get around. Let's go back to IL Spy. I might not need to derive from something that I need to get to from reflection or through reflection, I might be able to just find the thing that's getting these items and then inject them. Maybe. Uh, maybe. If I'm really, really lucky. Uh, it'd be nice if I could find references to this, though. <laughs> Let's see. Are there any... Are there any things that stand out? Let's look for menus. Action display state. You can't really inherit from things unless you're going to compile code at runtime. I'm not sure it'll work in the editor. Yeah. So I need to I need to find the thing that's actually creating the drop there the the menus, um, which is a little awkward. But my assumption is it's either going to use this item action class. Um, so let's find. Let's see. Nothing is exposed. Okay. Uh, hmm. Okay. Hmm. Well, then let's just check to see if anything stands out. Activation, add track, subgroup. Nope, that's not it. Although that is a command. It's a track action. You know what? A track action might be fine. Uh, let's check those out. Track action. Who wants to bet that it's internal and we can't do anything? 
I'm actually curious about this. Oh, if it's internal, it doesn't matter. <laughs> okay, uh, track action. Of course, it's friggin' internal. Okay. Um, what about track extensions? Doing anything useful here? Uh, get gap at time, remove bro broken track, that show minus that collapse, subject collapse, parent tracks, duplicate your position on the clone, update the clone next section, copy the lens, blah, blah, blah. Okay, nothing useful there. Uh, sequence, sequence, reorder tracks, get scene reference track. Get scene game object. Get scene game object by new director. Blah blah blah. Prefabber asset. Jace. Hmm. Okay, so those are not what we want. I'm also going to go ahead and apologize ahead of time because I get the feeling that um, a lot of tonight is going to be a lot of hmms and haws due to me trying to figure this stuff out. Um, and also frustrated groans because Unity likes to name all of its stuff internal. Because why would they want you to expand upon what they've built? Ugh. Toggle track action. It's probably the same thing. Mm -hmm. Where in the world are you? Ah, there it is. Toggle track action. Which, of course, derives from track action, which is nothing I can derive from. <sighs> Freaking ridiculous. Do a static track action. Uh, menu item action base. Editor assemblies, don't get loaded types. Okay. Type dot is generic type, type dot is nested, type dot is abstract, type is subclass of action type. Okay. Um hmm. I'm wondering what this is just is this just like our oh fine. That way. I'm assuming that's just our assemblies that are loaded for the editor. Um can I inject that somehow? Ah, it's annoying. It's all protected. Ugh. All right. Um. If you pay for Pro, you get access to the source code. But that's also 325 bucks a month that I wouldn't be making make at home. Yeah. That's well, and that's that's why I always get so frustrated whenever they they namespace internal because it seems like less like a like a design choice, like they think that's better, and more like a, this is incentive for people to get the source code, and that that just really makes me mad whenever that happens. Um, I mean, I can't blame them for that, I guess, but I can certainly be mad at them for it. Uh, yeah, I honestly don't think I can get around this. Because it seems like I have to derive from a specific type uh, in order to be detected. But, but, maybe, maybe I can find a way to get around it entirely. So instead of using their system, um, I just need to get, I need to find the base thing, the thing that ultimately generates uh that list there because if i can hook into that then i can i can do something here it's gonna suck but it should be possible um okay so check out manipulator it's all internal of course it is um let's see just go through here step by step uh, you have to buy plus so that you can do a full install via the command line, so it makes it a pain to set up build servers and stuff. It's been a week at work getting things rigged up with Jenkins. Yeah. Yeah, I... I don't know. It's... 
it's just really frustrating when stuff like that happens where there that that's one of the reasons why I really like how Unreal handles itself. Just, you know, everyone gets open source or everyone gets the source code. So you can make minor tweaks like that. Cause this is this is clearly something that I think would be really, really nice to have if they just didn't mark it frickin' internal. Um which apparently has been the sentiment for a lot of things, actually. Uh, if you go back and watch a couple of, of uh, un talks at Unite from two or three years ago, um, they've had people just come out and say, like, there are some really, really cool functions buried inside of uh, Unity's code that for some reason you just don't have access to unless you have source code. Uh, for a while, uh, you couldn't do transform and, like, move and rotate at the same time. You had to do two separate calls for it, um, even though Unity has one call for it. It was just, it was just marked internal um, for like three years. Um, I don't know why they do it like that. It's it's very annoying. Um, so let's see. Actually, actually, uh, what other context commands do I have here? I've copy, paste, delete, um, and I'm assuming those are going to go the same way. Frustrated groans. Uh, delete clips. Yeah, of course. Uh, Although this one's marked hide in menu. That's kind of interesting. Clip modifier. What are you? You're an internal class, but I might be able to do something with this. This actually seems useful. Um, so I basically need to get the clip modifier and then I need to pass it in a timeline asset and then the, the clip. And... Well, that doesn't solve my problem. That that solves the functionality problem, but it doesn't solve the menu problem. Um, I think their devs are really protective of the engine's core stuff, but it hurts some of the usability that people use Unity for. Yeah, and, and again, like I could understand locking down things that they think are dangerous, um, which is why they do stuff like, you know, make Unity uh, run on the main thread, um, and they don't like that, like Unity is not thread safe uh, because they, I guess, just believe that that's the way to go. It's perfectly fine and understandable. Um, but for things like this, it's clearly it's clearly something that's meant to be derived from. Like it's meant to be expanded on, and they just held it back. It's really annoying. Um, so we're gonna ta I'm gonna make a note of clip modifier because we're gonna need that. Um, we're gonna do nothing with you for now. Clip modifier. Okay, uh, on top of that, so I think clip modifier would be the thing that we need to ultimately go through if we want to do stuff with clips, but the, the problem is still figuring out what to do with the friggin' um, context commands here. I'm wondering if there's actually other... Probably not. Chances are everything's going to go through their main menu. I really don't want to have to recreate that. It's going to suck so hard. Uh, let's see. So we have different options here. Lock, mute, add activation clip. Um, I can't really do anything there, which is interesting. Hello, Gelmega. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight? <clears throat> All right. We are currently trying to... Well, I'm currently complaining about Unity's lack of transparency for certain things. Um, I guess I shouldn't call it lack of transparency. More of an obstinate refusal to allow people access to some of their internal calls that really shouldn't be marked internal. Um, basically, we're trying to figure out context commands within the timeline. <sighs> Not going well so far. Um, but maybe there is something I can do here. Uh, let's go to timeline utility again. I'm curious actually i'm really curious if is there like a timeline no of course not that would be cool uh hmm what could i do here add component menu context menu create asset menu hmm. This is frustrating. <laughs> messing with the timeline scrubber. Uh, kind of. I mean, we're messing with more the clips themselves. 
Um, sorry to hear that you're feeling sick, Omega. Hopefully, uh, hopefully you'll recover soon. No one likes to be sick. <laughs> also needed a while to fix an issue with OpenGL and Insight. Hmm. Oh, are you moving on to the rendering components of your engine then? Or is that for rendering your engine's utilities still? Um, okay, so what can we do here? See, and that, that's the frustrating thing is like, I'd be fine with even, I think, this, like a context command. Um, let's look for that, see if that's a thing. Add activation clip. There's an add track subgroup. But there's not an add activation clip. Hmm. That that could be useful, actually. Um, let's let's look at let's see, that was that's the activation track. Okay. So that might actually be in uh at engine, not editor. So let's go to activation track. That derives from because I might maybe I can get around this by simply setting it up in the track assets themselves. I mean, it's not ideal. Um, let's see, what was my option there? Add activation clip. No, so that's just for adding the freaking clip. Well, fooey. I mean, worse comes... Oh, false alarm. I do it here. Oh, I can't even use the context menu. Okay. So, crap. Yeah, so that's even worse. Um, okay. Okay. Rendering in general. Hmm. Let's see. For some reason, when I start to debug with Insight, the OpenGL error was set to GL invalid enum, which screwed up the calls after it, so I need to GL get error. Just get rid of that. <laughs> yeah, I'm assuming that a lot of the GL stuff is pretty crazy. Uh, my only experience with any of that is trying to look at Vulkan, and I could not even get the basic like cube renderer test to work. That's how bad I am with that stuff. Okay, so let's go to track asset here. Um, Track asset, playable assets, realize blah, 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 blah. Return, track assets, internal list of clips, muted. Hmm. So there's no from the looks of it. If I want something like that, create default clip. Create clip where T is scriptable object and I playable object. Validate type, type from handle. Create and add new clips of type. Hmm. Presumably, this is just to allow it to only place clips that it should be allowed to place. Um. Hmm. Okay. Hmm. Let's go to. Well, that's not really going to do me any. Uh, stick to one task at a time, Chris. Okay. So. Track asset extensions. Set group. What do we do? Assigns the track to the specified group track. Group track this belongs to. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Let's see. Are there other extension classes in the base runtime stuff? Clip caps extension. Oh, look at that. It's internal. I, I was. I'd say I was surprised. Uh, 
Let's see, constants, attributes, playable. No worries. I will probably be on for a while, so <laughs> take your time. All right, so there's no extension classes that are really useful. <sighs> Freaking, of course, it's internal. Um, do have anything for create? Control track, control. Hmm. Well, this is very annoying. Uh, we'll take one more look at the Unity Editor timeline stuff and see if we can get something useful out of this. Ooh, clip context menu that. Uh, mm. Why am I not surprised? I control. Hmm. Well, that that could be useful. Parent dot context click, but there is no context, right? That's manipulator. A lot of derived types, that's positive. That indicates something interesting at the very least. Selector tool, double track or double click. Okay. Um, we can't really do much with it, but we can go to context menu again. Hmm. And all this does is Code from Unity, what kind of black magic ritual did you need to complete to get that? I just decompiled one of their DLLs. Um, their, Unity is in a weird spot with that, because obviously all their stuff is in DLLs, but they're pretty open about people being, like, pretty okay with people just opening them up. So I'm not too worried about doing this on a dev stream. <laughs> um, but... Yeah, they have a, there was at least up to a certain point, I think it still actually is around, there was a, a GitHub or, uh, somewhere, a Git, a Git repo that was just the Unity DLLs that have been pre-decompiled for you, um, so you can see what they're doing. I don't know how up to date they are, they might be like a year a year behind. Um, last time I looked, they were not the most recent, which was annoying. Um, but let's see here, timeline clip GUI, target is timeline clip GUI. Sequencer context menu. <sighs> this is annoying. Is there is there really no context menu here? I mean, there's that, but that's not context. This is annoying. can we do about this? I, I really like last bastion is basically we make it our own editor. And I really, really, really don't want to do that because that there has to be a better way than just accepting defeat and going through and doing like a manual clip manipulation here. It would be so much better if I could just right click and do what I want. It just doesn't seem like I can actually do that because the way unity set it up, it, it does reflection to find what it needs. And then it builds a list from that. And I can't, I can't get in on that list because I would have to derive from something that I would have to use reflection to get. <sighs> Great. So annoying. Okay. Okay. So let's go to, well, no, that won't really matter. Um, why do you have to? So annoying, Unity. Match duration? Oh, that's probably... See, like, that's exactly what I want, basically. <laughs> uh, I basically want match duration, except I apparently can't do that. I'm assuming this is actually for, like, 
multiple clips, making sure that they match the duration um, of each other. But it's, it's really annoying that I can't just add context commands to this. <sighs> Jeez. And they also don't have a context menu. It's just... Ah! It's, it's like Timeline was designed to piss me off. <sighs> okay. I mean, I already I already have issues with um, so timeline. In order to get references to objects in the scene, you have to use the exposed property uh, parameter. Well, variable type, I guess. And the Unity will not serialize lists of those, which is very annoying. So you can't do arrays in Clips unless you do something really convoluted. Um, it's very very annoying. <laughs> That's that's true. Um, we like to joke at work whenever we run into a problem with Unity. Um, like we have, there's a feature that seems like it would be obvious that Unity would want it, and they just haven't done it. Um, we always just joke, "Well, why would you want that?" It's just it's so annoying that that's. <sighs> like I'm not asking for much here. I basically just want to be able to freaking. Um, do context commands, and they don't exist. Like I can, I can see how they're done in IL Spy, but I can't do anything with them. <sighs> okay, okay. Let's calm down and try to figure this out. Hmm. I'm going to assume that we can't do anything out of the box. Whatever we want to do is going to involve reflection. Um, but the main problem is that it seems like they're using reflection themselves to grab stuff. So they don't have anything I can call to just say, like, add this. I have to derive from something, and I can't really do that because, well, it's building things from a class that it's specifically looking for that's part of itself and is marked internal. <sighs> I, editor item. This. Ah, excuse me. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Editor clip. Interesting. Must have some sort of internal use for an editor wrapper. Um. I really the main the main reason that I didn't want to have to derive from something like make a base class that had custom editor stuff was it it's gonna mean that all of my clips to get those utilities would have to derive from a certain class and that is really stupid I don't there's no benefit to it. There's no guarantee that I can really do anything with that. It would just be a lot of wasted effort, in my opinion. Um, but thank you, Sir Mr. E. Thank you very much for the host. I apologize to everyone in advance because, uh, <laughs> because I'm running into some wonderful, wonderful fun times with Unity's internal editor stuff. <sighs> I really don't want to have to dig into reflection. Well, no, we've already... We already know that reflection won't save me here. Um, there's got to be something I can do here. There's got to be some freaking way to get Unity Timeline to do what I want here. I do not... I cannot believe that it's all entirely handled through reflection. Actually, I can totally believe that. Um, I was also going to say I can't believe that they would leave you no option, no way to get in on the context commands, except I can totally believe that too. So... What can I do to get around that? I could try... Yeah, that, that might work. This is going to be interesting. Okay. Well, if Unity is going to be annoying about this, then I see no reason why I can't be annoying about it. Um, so I'm going to create a new folder. This is going to be an experiment. I don't know how well this is going to go. Editors. Okay. So I'm going to make like a custom editor for all 
clips. And we'll see what I can do with that. Um, so we want to have this be a timeline clip editor. Okay. So basically what this will do is we'll replace the default editor that Unity uses for all of its timeline clips with one that I write. That will actually be useful. Um, okay, so we're going to say using Unity Editor, I'm going to derive from Editor, that's perfectly fine. Um, make sure that we are in the namespace editor, which means that I actually need to derive from Unity Editor. Unity edit. I cannot type. Dot editor. All right, uh, we're going to say custom editor type of, and then we're not going to do anything because I forgot to do the most important part of this, obviously, which is using Unity Engine. Actually, no, I want use, using Unity Editor in there. Uh, I can't type. Dot timeline, I need the timeline editor, I believe. And I'm also going to want to say using uh, Unity Engine, not editor, engine, dot timeline. I think that's all we're going to need, so I'm going to go ahead and that in here. Get rid of you. Okay, so we don't want it actually to be of or derived from Unity Editor. I think we're going to want to try to do Timeline Clip Editor. Mm -hmm. Circular. Oh crap, that's my own Timeline Clip Editor. <laughs> Oops. Uh, let's go to Unity Editor. Uh, dot Timelines. Dot Oh, interesting. There's only a timeline editor. Okay, well that's that's fair, I suppose. So they don't have a custom editor then? That's interesting. Uh, oh wait, no, that that makes sense because the uh, the editor information that you see above uh, the clip information is all done by the timeline. It's not done by the clip itself. That makes sense. Um, so yeah, this just needs to be Unity Engine or Unity Editor dot Editor. Okay, uh, this is going to be of course a custom editor for type of uh, timeline, not timeline, timeline asset, actually, not timeline clip. Um, I probably should rename that timeline asset editor. I'm going to go to bed. Haven't been awake too long. Oof. Yeah, you definitely need rest, especially if you're uh, not feeling too well. So uh, get some rest. <laughs> Get away from my terrible typos. That's very true. Um, and uh, yeah, hope you feel better, man. All right, so this is going to be a uh, editor, a custom editor for all timeline assets, and it's also going to override and be a fallback for everything. Um, so let's go ahead and just real quick do a, a basic GUI. So we're going to say override uh, on inspector GUI. Uh, we will do based on, on inspector GUI after we do a quick like if I'm going to make a button if GUI layout dot button we'll just call it test okay so now if everything is done correctly that should be the new editor for all GUI clips and we're going to have to do some uh, field reflection to make sure that we can get like anything that derives from this. Uh, well, anything anything that derives from timeline asset will render itself correctly, um, and we'll get to that later. But for now, I want to see if this actually works, and places a te uh, places a test button over the activation track. If it does, then we might have found a way to get into Unity's timeline functionality without having to actually get into Unity's timeline functionality because for some reason it's a freaking mess. <sighs> All right, uh, let's see here. Did not work. Mm. I am willing to bet that Activation Playable Asset has its own editor, doesn't it? So that, that's problematic. It's not going to function for all of Unity's. I mean, that's not as bad. It's certainly better than it used to be, but let's see if we can find that. Um, presumably... Oof. I don't actually know which one it's going to be. Um... I mean, these are both things that I would expect to actually be the the clip. Interesting. Uh, let's go to activation track, activation clip, right? 
activation playable asset. There we go. Um, oh, is that why then? Because it's a playable asset and not a timeline asset? Interesting, interesting. Okay, um, let's go to activation track. It is, let's see, activation playable asset. So fine, okay. Uh, real quick, is timeline asset, go to definition. Okay, it derives from playable assets. We're gonna change that. Uh, then we are going to actually have this be sort of timeline asset. It's gonna be playable asset. <sighs> fine, be that way. Using Unity Engine dot playables. I hate that they split it into two different time, two different namespaces. So playable asset. Let's see if we can do that. Okay. Yeah, the whole like Unity Engine dot timeline and Unity Engine dot playables split drives me nuts. I don't know why they did that. Presumably it seems to be like a way to isolate the clips from the timeline themselves, but it's weird because it just means that if you have both, which more often than not you do if you're doing editor scripting, you have to just reference both. <clears throat> Did not work. Okay. Um, let's see. Activation playable assets. So let's go back up here. Did it have one? Activation. There's an, ah, here we are. Yep. Oh, look at that. It's just... <laughs> Come on! <sighs> Fine. It's it's a custom inspector that literally is just doing nothing, and because it exists, I can't do anything with it. Of course. Of course. Of course. Um, I guess that somewhat makes sense. So I might want to derive from basic playable asset inspector. Let's go ahead and say... Basic playable. Nope. Okay, no, I will not because clearly that is an internal class. How foolish of me to think that it was not. It's right there. Yeah. Okay. <sighs> Why you gotta be like that, Unity? Well, that's that's kind of unacceptable. Then I don't want to just make things for my own scripts. I want them to also work for Unity's built-in scripts. Because again, like the main one that I'm probably going to use these functionality or the, some of this functionality on is the active stuff. Because um, I would just like to be able to right click and tell it to freaking take up the entirety of the duration for the timeline. Is that so much to ask? Because apparently to Unity, yes, yes it is. Um, God, what can I do about that? I really want to avoid building everything from the ground up, but I might have to do that. Jeez. All right. Let's go to manipulator. Manipulator. Show event. Net. Consume. Okay, so it's not that. It's um, new item action base. So I'm going to have to build it from the ground up. Won't I? So I'm basically going to have to do exactly what Unity is already doing, but I have to code it all. Because that's the only way I can get access to this and reliably do it. Oh my god, why? Why Unity? <sighs> okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Alright. So let's see. <laughs> get display name. That's not what we want. Uh, we're going to go... Let's go ahead and um, drill down until we can find something that seems like it's the, the class constructing all of the context commands. Uh, so let's go to, let's see, what was it? Delete clip. Oh, sorry, not that. Delete clips. Uh, let's go delete action. So timeline action. Menu item action base. Okay, so this is probably, I'm assuming, getting referenced by everything. And, well, it's not being referenced by everything. Instead, it's being referenced by something specific. Um, let's see. Timeline, menu. Okay, that's not anything really useful. This is cool. 
quite frustrating. Well, apparently I can't find its references very easily, um, which is, of course, always annoying. Also, wow, they're using system.link, because of course they are. Because uh, why would you bother with garbage when you're in the editor? Which is actually kind of a fair thing, I suppose. Mostly annoying. Um... State shortcuts. Interesting. That could be useful. Hmm. Okay. User action. Interesting. This may be useful. Get action. Can we do this? Let's see, user action result. S actions, which are it's a dictionary of strings and what derives from user action or does anything? There's nothing that derives from it. Interesting. Which means that we're adding this? Hmm. Okay, so add binding. User action dot get action and binding so add new user action binding source modifiers. Okay, so I can get the I can get the keys and the modifiers, but I don't know how to get the action out of this. Hmm. Okay, uh, so if this is what I think it is, then going to, I believe, delete. Yeah, there's a... So this is the shortcut and the key that we presumably want, so let's go to delete. Um, Presumably that's the delete action that we want. Okay, so it's got a display name and a shortcut, which is an internal thing because of course it is. Because <sighs> I can't have nice things. Okay. Selection manager dot get current inline editor curve uh, item array selection manager dot selected item GUI item actually with over done vote by name clips turn markers selection manager dot select tracks Hmm. Okay. Interesting. Track action or item action invoker. Which presumably is just an internal class that wraps item actions. Um I mean I could maybe See, the, here's the frustrating part, is that I can see ways that I could access these functions, but these aren't the functions... I don't want to access these functions, I want to create new ones. Um, and I don't... I don't see a way to do that. I guess, let me... Let's Google this and actually see if someone's done this already. Um, so let's look for Unity timeline uh, custom actions and I doubt we'll get something here um, yeah we're probably gonna get some talk on events which is not ex 
exactly what I want. Um, although interesting, Keijiro has an audio preview track that you can scrub along. That's kind of cool. Um, right, right, right. Oh, wait. Hold on a second. Do I have Cinemachine? I do. I might be able to see uh, what Cinemachine does, actually, because I think it has some... Uh, maybe it doesn't. I thought it had some new commands, but false alarm. False alarm, everyone. It's not, not as cool as we thought. Disappointing. Um, God, this is annoying. Especially because... Okay. So... Trication. Okay, uh, yeah, we're probably not going to be able to do anything here. How annoying. Timeline action. Yeah. Disappointing. Yeah. God, that's so annoying. What's even worse is that uh, I bet if we were to go to something like this, yeah, there's our. <sighs> Dang it! So I can do it. Ah. Uh. So I can make a custom editor, and that's like the that's the closest I can get. It's the closest I can get. Yep. Okay. Um. There's really no way to handle this. Um, I'm trying to think of what I could do through system reflections to get at this. I, I'm willing to bet that like every single one of Unity's internal things, um, let's look for like the audio. Yeah, every single one of its internal frickin' classes. Ah! Why? Why do I even bother? Okay, um, so, I really, really don't want to have to do it through the editor, but I honestly can't think of a way to do it besides that, and I've been sitting here for an hour, <laughs> and looking through their DLLs has just made me sad because of the fact that, well, clearly, they just don't want you to mess with it. Um, it's so freaking stupid. All right. Um, let's go ahead and make this work at least. Private, static, uh, GUI content. Uh, we want this to be our fill label is equal to new GUI content. This is going to be fill clip. Let's see. Uh, force the clip to be as long as. Well, hold on. Force the clip to. The, wow, can't even think about how to phrase this. To start at. Wow, to start at the start. At the beginning of the uh, timeline and last until the timeline's end. Okay, so we're going to come down here, change this to fill label, 
and we're going to go down to here. We're going to say protected void fill clip. Fill clip. Okay, so here's where it gets super fun. I need to. Oh my god. I don't even know if I can actually do this. Uh, timeline. Timeline editor dot timeline asset dot clips. Oh, okay. Get clip. Nope. Seriously, I can only delete clips. You're kidding me. You're kidding me. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no get. Wow. Oh my goodness. This is. Utter, utter trash. <laughs> okay, uh, let me think. Let's see. Uh, let's go ahead and I need to go. Oh, no, that's done through my track asset. Holy crap. Is there, there's no way. There is no way to... No, no, no. The target should still be the clip. Okay, never mind. False alarm. Um, let's go up here to uh, protected virtual void um, on enable. Wow, that was terrible. Hello, Sky. Welcome back. How are you doing tonight? Uh, so I'm going to say private. I'm sorry, not private. Uh, protected. Timeline asset? I guess we'll call it playable asset. Playable asset. Asset. And we'll say asset is equal to target as playable asset. Okay. And now the question is, does asset have what I want? Asset dot... Okay. Oh, good. We have duration. And that's what I want. Oh, crap. I forgot the duration is not settable by default, so I have to manually do that, which I can't do. Mm. Yep. 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 <laughs> okay, 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 okay. No reference to track. Nope. Oh, goody. Oh, goody. So we're going to look at um, timeline, uh, what is it, SOS track asset, there we go, okay, um, that is not enough, mm -hmm. um, instead I need to go to play sound track, I believe, yep. Soundtrack. Okay. So let's see here. Right. This 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 method was not exactly uh, our preference either. Uh, clip dot clip duration. Let's go to definition there. Which all we did there was set clip duration. Oh right. And then we have the track go through and do that. Oh my goodness. I I. <clears throat> okay. I, mm. <sighs> right. So in order for me to set duration on clips, I was hoping that I could set it with the, uh, the clips themselves, but I forgot. Clips can't set their own duration. Only their tracks can do that. Because why would you ever need a clip to adjust its own duration? <sighs> to be fair, I could see an argument actually being made for that. It's still dumb. I can see it. Um, oh my goodness. I can't even do it through editor commands then. Because I need to get the track. And then the clip. And then I need to set the duration. <sighs> but apparently I can't get a, I can't get the uh, track from the clip. Which kind of makes sense. But is very, very annoying. Um, okay. Okay, okay. Great. It's great. It's great. It's great. It's great. Um, 
So, I'm going to peak this duration, and then I'm going to peak you. <sighs> Let's see. Can I do anything useful here? Oh, wait, 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 hold on. Mm. I might actually be able to... Oh, that's interesting. So I can't... That parts? Hmm. Okay. Uh, well. Oh, but the clip is different. Mm. Okay. So... We need, jeez, this is annoying, asset dot, I can create a playable, which will create a, of course it's going to create a playable. <sighs> Nothing useful there. And now, for timeline editor, let's see, what do we got? We got a timeline asset, so that gives us a timeline asset. And then, from here, can I get anything? Can I get anything? Are you just only going to allow me to actually uh, delete things or create them? I can get its duration, so that's good to know. Um, but the worst thing... Huh, that's interesting. Gather properties. Uh, oh, here we go. Get output tracks and get output tracks. Okay, I might be able to do something with this. Um, okay, this is actually a little bit easier. Okay, returns the number of output tracks on the timeline. Um, this is going to be interesting. So, I'm going to need to do that. I'm also going to want to say int index is equal to that. Then we're going to say timeline editor dot timeline asset dot let's get output tracks, I think. Okay, so that gives us an innumerable of track assets. Uh, so let's go ahead and go up here. We're going to say using system.collections and that, sh oh, dot generic, sorry, dot generic. So that gives us an I innumerable. Um, Gives us an enumerable of track assets. We'll call that tracks. Okay. So while tracks dot. Uh, oh, why am I doing that? Uh, I can just say for int i equals zero. I is less than index. I probably shouldn't call it that. Um, I plus plus tracks of i. Oh, right, it's innumerable. Um, okay. So I want to say tracks dot get numerator, don't I? Yeah. Okay. So we got to do that. Uh, so I'm going to say i enumerator, also a track asset, track is equal to this. Then while track dot has wait am i thinking of the wrong thing i'm thinking of uh ah there it is move next okay so after that we're going to say if track dot uh let's see current dot can i get the cliffs I can get the clips. All right. Um, this is so frustrating. Okay. Uh, so I basically... Wow. Really? I can't believe that. Um, so we're going to do this. Zero. Comment you out. 
Okay, uh, so we are going to want to say track.current. Get clips. Which gives us another enumerable. So I basically need to iterate through that. And basically, so but what I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to get my clip. <laughs> that's, that's all I'm trying to do. Uh, and once I have that, then I'll be able to manually set its duration. God, this is so stupid. Okay. Um, so I need to grab this, actually. Uh, so we're going to paste that, get clips. And that gets me an enumerable of timeline clips, right? Okay, so enumerable, or I enumerable, timeline clips, clips, equal to that. Okay, and then of course we're going to have to do I enumerator, timeline clip, clip is equal to clips dot get enumerator, while clip dot move next, if, right, clip dot current dot, let's find out what I have here. Mix in percentage, mix out curve, duration, percentage, time, parent, track. Are you kidding me? I can get the track from the top. <sighs> yeah, that's about right. Okay. Uh, let's see here. Uh, d -d 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 parent track, post translation mode, recordable. So you can make custom recordable stuff? That's kind of cool. Uh, start is the time. Okay, time scale to local time, underlying asset. Underlying asset. I'm guessing that's the scriptable object component. Well, not component, the scriptable object that's bound to it. Okay. Um, hmm. That's not actually anything I can use yet. I need to say asset dot, what do I have here? I have duration. I can't just do match durations though. That's way too uh, risky. Type flags in components. Um, Hmm. A playable binding. That's, I'm assuming, the values associated with this clip? Uh, let's find out. Enumerable, playable binding regarding the output of a playable asset. Bindings is equal to asset dot get play. Oh, sorry. Are you serious? Outputs, that's what it is. Okay. What are our options here? Playable binding, none, default duration, um, stream name, stream type, source object, source binding type. Okay, none of that is actually useful for me. Um, okay, well. So I can basically get the duration, um, but that's not really useful. Uh, let's go over here to play soundtrack. I'm going to go to play sound clip. Here that mission that should derive from playable asset. Um, peak definition, which itself derives from scriptable object. And that can have a custom inspector created for it. So, okay. That's, I'm already at the I'm already at the root there. Piece of crap. <laughs> Dang it! This is incredibly frustrating. Okay. Um. Hmm. So I can get clips. I can get the specific clip. I don't. I just don't know how to uh, how to tell if the clip I'm looking at is the actual. A uh, clip that I can use. This might be it, actually. If clip.currentAsset is equal to asset, 
I think that might be it. Because this is a, it's an object. An asset is a playable asset, but the asset is a, is an I playable asset, an asset which itself is a playable asset, which derives from I playable asset, should be correct. So I think I can do that comparison. Um, okay. And that means that once we've found all of that stuff, then I can, uh, how do I want to handle this? Um, so I need an index. I can't, oh geez, I can't do that. Um, oh man, I, I might not be able to do any of this on enable. Um, I was hoping that I could like cache all of these values, but since you can move clips around, uh, to anywhere that you want, there's no real reason that the order would be the same. Um, so if I cached the like index of the track um, that this clip is on, as soon as you move the track, that breaks it and that makes it useless. So I have to do this every single time. Oh my goodness. Okay, fine. Um, we'll run a test clip here, I guess. Uh, I really don't want to do a go-to here, but I'm going to for now. Um, Can I really not go to anything that doesn't, can I not go to, okay, I guess I just need that, okay. Um, so I'm going to say go to and command. Did I spell it wrong? Oh, pff, why did I put a colon there? That's why. And why are you squiggly? Okay, that's weird. Um, okay, so if that is true, then we're going to debug dot log. I'm mm, I'm mostly curious to know if I can get this. Uh, let's debug test. Well, need a string there. Uh, we're gonna say test five. Okay. So we're not using this index at all, so I'm going to go ahead and comment that out. Um, I think that won't work. That's only going to search through our entire first track, isn't it? Um, no, I, li I lied. Um, that's what these while loops are for. OK. Uh, yeah, let's give it a test. Um, and you know what? Let's also go ahead and debug. Uh, let's debug the clips length. So we'll say clip dot current dot duration, which I can set. That is great. Can I change its start? Oh, I can. Oh, good. And I can change its end. Ah, oh, sweet. Is that in seconds? I'm assuming that's in seconds. Um, so let's go ahead and say duration. So I can manually move it and position it, and I think it will work. Um, I remember there was some oddity with that, with regards to how Timeline saves that. I really, really hope that create tracks or that uh, our track assets don't just override that find out okay so I'm gonna go ahead and go over here <sighs> right yeah that's really annoying um out of curiosity is the activation track I'm assuming it's internal Ah, oh, sweet, it's not. Yes, okay, I can just write a custom class for that, Inspector. Um, I'm going to do that because Unity likes to toy with me. So I'm going to say um, activation clip editor. Okay, and 
I'm just going to make that derive from Timeline Clip Editor. Mm -hmm. That'll show you Unity. Okay, that was interesting. Go ahead and save that. Okay, so this is going to derive from... Well, first off, it's going to be in the right namespace. It's going to derive from a Timeline Clip Editor. And it is going to be a custom... Oh, right, it needs to... Okay, so we're going to derive from custom editor type of, well, of. Um, presumably, I actually need to also use uh, Unity Engine dot playables. I'm guessing. Um, activation. Okay, that's not it. What are you in? Okay, of course it's in timeline. Timeline. Activation. I think that's it. Oh, that's the track. Crap. No! <laughs> oh, ah, I was so close. So the track is public, but everything else is... In... <sighs> Dang it. Of course. Of course. I... I don't know what I was expecting. I really don't. Ah, <sighs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, uh... <sighs> yeah. What is this even? Like, is that the behavior? That's the behavior. So yeah, it's that's worthless. I <laughs> jeez. <sighs> Why do I even try? Now let's let Unity compile. So, right. It's useless on the active stuff. Um, which, of course, was the main thing that I wanted it for. Um, but that is apparently a pipe dream. <sighs> because why would you ever want to extend Unity's internal editor stuff? Oy. Okay. Well, let's... Um, once that finishes compiling, I'm going to create a basic uh, playable track and then I'm just gonna create a clip on it and see what I can get out of it all right so we're gonna go ahead and add a playable track it's not gonna do anything we're just oh really really I can't add anything to it what are all of my things on custom tracks now man it's really really annoying let's go ahead and duplicate this Did I get anything from this? Oh my goodness, it did. Oh my goodness, it actually did. Okay, so I mean the editor button works, this fill clip thing. I can actually, it does seem to get everything the way I would expect. <sighs> God, that's so annoying. Um, well, uh, let me just go ahead and edit that real quick and double check that. Uh-oh, that's significantly worse. Clear that. Try that again. Oh, look at that. Nothing. Are you kidding? What? You're kidding me. How does that... I'm sorry. What just happened here? Oh, right. My my fault. I, I'm not doing anything on the test command. It's when it's uh, focused. That's, that's, that's me being stupid. Um, so we need to move this over to fill clip. Paste this in. Uh, we're going to change this to a local variable. variable view. Okay. Um, I guess I also could probably actually still cache that. Now that I think about it. Let's, let's go ahead and keep that there. Get rid of this part. Okay. Um, so we're going to let that run on tests. It seems like it's finding it correctly, given that its duration is uh, correct. So I'm going to try setting its duration to this. Um, okay, so this gets a little bit more interesting. Uh, let's do our timeline asset. So we're going to say timeline asset active 
timeline, I guess, is equal to timeline editor dot timeline asset. Let's go ahead and move this over to here. Okay. And active timeline, I'm assuming has a duration. It does. Yes, it does. Cool. Um, that means that we're going to want to come down to here and say clip dot current dot start is equal to zero. Clip dot current dot end is equal to active timeline dot duration. Are you, are you kidding me? I guess that's, that's fair. It would just be the duration that I need. Um, okay, so we will try that again. And this time when we hit the test button, it should automatically resize this play particles here to be the entire width of the timeline. I apologize that this has been a fairly aggravating dev stream. I was hoping that I would be able to do more. Um, and by I, I mean I was hoping I would have access to be able to do more. <sighs> but I should have known better. Um, Alright, so we're going to go ahead and select this. And we're going to hit... Yes! Arr! Okay, at least we got that. We got something to work. That's all I wanted. Ah, uh, jeez. And it and it saved. That's good. Ah, uh, jeez. So it's it's really annoying that I have to do this through a custom editor. I'm I'm really really upset that I cannot do this through um, through menu commands or through custom context menus because apparently clips don't have context menus. I just... It's weird to me that that's the case. That there is no, like, timeline item or anything that you can... Like, there's... There's track commands, there's track binding things, um, but that's for information about timeline tracks. It, it's, it's really upsetting that I, that I can't access that stuff. It would be so much better if I could. And it's really disappointing that I cannot. Um, and unfortunately, because it's a cyclical relationship, it uses reflection to find stuff. Um, and I would have to derive from the things that it's trying to find. I can't really get in. I, there's not really a good way to do it. Um, so, geez, this is really annoying. Um, uh, trying to think of something I could do. Um, but honestly, the only thing I can I can think to do is to completely reverse engineer how they're building all of their menus um, in timeline and inject it myself. And of course, that that basically is just recreating timeline because um, I'm pretty sure at the at at some point I'm going to run into a situation where in order for me to go deeper into it and actually get things to work, I would have to basically just recreate timeline. Um, and I don't want to do that. I want to just, I just want to edit this stuff. I just want to be able to use this, but it's all internal. Every single class that is used to build menus in timeline is internal. <sighs> Jeez. Okay. Well, we got it to work, um, at the very least. <laughs> ah, so annoying. I can't believe that I have to go through the editor for it. <sighs> All right. 
So, well, I got it working, but I have to go through the editor. I can't, I can't do it through context commands. I can't do it through timeline commands. I have to use a custom editor uh, for, for me to be able to do it. But the downside to that is that it means I cannot do it on Unity's built-in stuff because, of course, they all have their own in their own editors, and also, of course, they are internal, so I cannot do anything about it. Um, geez, that's really annoying. Actually, could I do something about? Well, no. But yeah, uh, just just so you can see it, we do actually have fill clip working. So when I select a clip. If I hit fill clip over here, it adjusts its length to be the duration of the entire timeline. And that's nice, and I'm glad that I can do that for all of my scripts. I'm just really annoyed that I can't do it for any of Unity's, because all of theirs are going to have custom uh, custom inspectors that do nothing, I might add. They literally just do nothing. I do not understand. <laughs> I'm not even joking. They have... They have custom inspectors for all of their classes, um, and they they don't do anything. They're empty. They just use their base class. It's just it's it's mind blowing that that's how they decided to do it. <sighs> yeah, but yeah, you can see here that uh, what is it? Activation playable asset inspector. Nothing does nothing. Audio same way nothing it does nothing it just it just overrides basic playable asset inspector so i can't do that either that seems to be the only reason for it it's so weird yeah right and 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 i can't i can't i can't fix it because those things are internal so i can't even they overrode their own base inspector purely so that other people could not do it Ugh. It's, I just, I legitimately want to know why. I really wish that this was like last November and I had been trying this stuff so that I could go to the uh, Unity experts at Unite and be like, why are you doing this? What is your problem? Um, God. <sighs> yeah, it's, it's really frustrating. Um. I mean, I'm, I'm happy that I, I'm able to at least get around it for my own scripts, but it's so disappointing that I can't, I can't do that for their scripts. Um, and it's really annoying that they don't have a context menu. I don't, I don't know why they did it that way. Um, anyway, um, I guess... Something I'm going to do real quick is I'm going to go ahead and uh, flesh out this timeline clip editor, um, which I probably should rename to like playable asset editor, um, which I might as well do right now. So playable, not playable, playable asset editor. Go ahead and let that compile. Change this to playable asset editor. get beat debt because I renamed a script while things were compiling, which is going to force me to actually uh, close all of this. Close that because I have to recompile everything now. Yeah, I am really, really disappointed that Unity decided to go this way. Um... It makes it, I think it's legitimately impossible. I think it is legitimately impossible for me right now with the way timeline is set up. It's impossible for me to do anything like context commands or um, clip specific context commands. Um, like I can't do tracks, I can't do clips. It's all because Unity timeline stuff, I guess, uses reflection to search for all of its stuff. Um, and I can't use reflection to derive from something. So yeah, it's not, it's not okay. Um, well, when I, when I say, yeah, when I say impossible, I don't mean that it's literally impossible. I just mean sinking the time into it. 
this, this is the really frustrating thing is that I'm sure it's possible to get in there, but it would it's going to take so much time for me to do it. And it's literally just because they refuse to allow you to edit these things. It's just because they've marked them as internal. So a single keyword change would expose this stuff to us and let us expand on it. And they just they just don't want you to do that. I it's it's maddening. Um yeah, I I'm really disappointed about that. Um okay. So let's go to our playable asset editor. Um I'm going to I'm gonna change this inspector a little bit. So instead of having the assuming I can select it. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's not gonna happen. Okay, there we go. Um, I'm basically going to make this a drop down. I'm going to have like a context commands uh, drop down that you can toggle open. Um, and for now, it's only going to have fill clip, I guess. But um, that way, I don't just have these buttons always there. Uh, okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to go to we'll keep the on enable. Um, you know what? We could probably also cache active timeline, but do we really care about that? Eh, probably not. It's fine. Um, let's go ahead and get rid of these things. And we're going to make this. Mm. 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 How annoying. Okay. Uh, we're going to go protected bool uh, context commands visible is equal to false. Say if, wow, well, it's not right. Uh, I'm going to say context commands visible is equal to editor GUI layout dot, I think it's called fold out. Yep. And we are going to have context commands visible with, uh, we'll say null for now, even though I know that's not going to work because it doesn't accept null. Ta da. Oh, I guess it's also because it's ambiguous. Um, I'm going to come up here. I'm going to say private static GUI content. Um, I want to call this context label, I guess. It's equal to new GUI content. Boom. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really a huge fan of how Unity likes to lock down a lot of its internal things. Um, they have they have some pretty cool things that you can kind of access through Reflection. Like there's a whole audio utility script that I have that does that. Um, but it's just so absurd that they choose that as their style. Um, okay, so we're going to call this context commands. Uh, let's see, various... On, uh, we'll, we'll say various commands to affect clips. Uh, well, we'll say to affect things like clip duration. Uh, we'll just leave it at that. That's fine. Um, we're going to change this to context label. Okay. And then we'll say if context commands visible. This way is not as preferable as um, using like serialized properties, but because basically what's going to happen is every time I select this, um, select a playable asset, this asset or context commands visible is going to be set to false. Um, that's preferable to, of course, having it be set to true, but it's kind of annoying. Yeah, I don't know. See, most most of my or most of my assumptions now for Pro, like the people who want Pro, are well, either one, they're companies that have uh, well, and and that's the thing, right? Is uh, you don't get source code for Pro, right? I thought Pro or Pro just gives you prioritized services basically now. Um, to get source code, you actually have to negotiate with Unity. Um, I didn't think it was actually pro because they have like an enterprise thing um, that they do. That's that's what gets you access to the source code. Um, and that's because they want money. And my assumption for that was 
Um, my assumption for the source code stuff was that you like the base engine that Unity provides, but you want to mostly tweak it, you know, tweak some small things. So, I mean, in that case, I could see the whole internal namespacing thing. Um, but more likely, it's because you just want to make optimizations and sort of make hijack the engine to do what you want. And that, that makes sense uh, to me, like being able to get the base engine, get prioritized support from Unity, talk with their engineers about doing things. Um, that all makes sense to me. I actually, that's, I'm not against that per se. I think it's actually a stupid idea now that Unreal is open source, basically. Because Unreal gets free work from its community, basically. <laughs> Uh, every time Unreal releases a new version of its engine, it has tons of, of fixes that the community did for free. And Unity's never going to get that because they're not they're not approaching from the side of making their, their tools open for everyone to use. And it's 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 a it's a it's a weird thing. Um anywho, let's go ahead and select this. So now we have these context er, context commands. Pretty good. Not the best, but pretty good. Um, I am also going to go ahead and say editor GUI dot indent level plus plus followed by editor GUI dot indent level minus minus. Okay. We will also probably end up moving this stuff into a separate function, so we might as well do that. Um, protected void draw context commands paste that in there um, I like to break this stuff out into separate functions whenever possible just so that child editors may be able to have a little bit more flexibility I mean technically Unreal isn't actually open source open source because you have to well, no, I mean, it's free now, isn't it? So it basically is just open source. It's it's like a weird version of open source, but it is technically, I think, open source. I think you have to have an Unreal or an Epic account or whatever to be able to look at it on GitHub, but that's not really much of an issue. Um, I find myself fighting them a lot for the types of games I want to make. Yeah, well, and, and that's that's another thing is um, Unreal is is... I think it's got nice business practices and all that, but if you're doing a simpler game, um, Unreal can really eat you. Um, like it's, it has support for 2D tools, but I feel like that's it's way overboard. Like no one's gonna pick Unreal to make their 2D game because that's so that's so weird. It's like, uh, crap. What's uh, reminds me of what Trey Parker and Matt Stone said about how they use really advanced 3D tools to make South Park. It's like um, using a bulldozer to play with a sand pit. Um, or like a sandbox, basically. It's it's weird. I don't really know. I, I don't really know anyone that's making a two D game with Unreal, even though Unreal has pretty sophisticated two D stuff. Um, it's because it's it's such a weird fit, right? Like when you think Unreal, you think graphical powerhouse, not not uh, not two D game. Anyway, so Phil Clip still works. Um, it's not indenting the way I would like it to, which is kind of annoying. Uh, I wonder if that would be fixed if I did this. Um, editor GUI layout. Uh, editor GUI. Seriously? Editor GUI layout dot begin vertical. Editor styles dot text area. And then editor GUI layout dot Vertical. Okay. Hmm. Well, if you're not going to, if you're debating engines, are you thinking of uh, another engine besides Unreal or Unity? I think Construct Three is out now, or is it still Construct Two? And then Got It or Godot released a new engine recently, I believe, or a new version of their engine. Um. Trying to think of all the all the game engines in play because there are a ton of them now. Okay, so we create that. What the heck? Weird. It's not. Huh. Okay. It must use some weird, ridiculous indenting then, because it's not paying attention to to these. 
which is annoying. Um, mostly I just wanted it to fit a little bit better with the uh, with the rest of the controls. It seems odd that they're floating like that. But I guess that's fine for now. Okay, let that compile. Oh, that's interesting. I'm assuming that's one of the newer ones then. Um, because a lot of the established game engines, I'm not sure how they are handling their cores. Um, I actually don't know if Unreal is multi-core yet. I would think so. Um, but a lot of a lot of established engines that have existed for around ten years at this point, I think they don't really tend to support multi multi-core threading. Um, let's go ahead take a look at this. All right. So I can open this up. Oh, crap. I need to do that. I always forget about that. Um, so whenever you're doing stuff with foldouts in Unity, make sure that you always append true at the end of your foldout commands, because um, that makes it so that you can toggle the label, or toggle the foldout by clicking on the label. It's very annoying if you have to click on the actual triangle, in my opinion. I think it's always preferable to be able to click on the label, too. Uh, Trying to think of what else we could do to uh, really help with clip durations and all that. Um, things that we could do from this context command. It's really annoying because I uh, I don't since I can't create context commands like actual context commands. I'm kind of limited in what I can do here, um, and what I really want to do. Honestly, fill clip is fine. That's that's a nice thing to be able to do. Um, but it does lose a lot of its potency because I can't do it on the actual freaking base Unity ones. Jeez. I don't think you can really get a modern PC with less than four cores. There might still be a few dual cores running around out there. Maybe. But I think you're largely right. Yeah. Um... And honestly, I think the whole uh, core limitation stuff is just because um, no one's actually sat down to make multi-core threaded engines, honestly. Uh, like Game developers are obviously aware of it, but it's just that a lot of architecture has been so built around the concept of only having one core that it doesn't really matter. Um, which is weird. I feel like that's just kind of a natural programmer laziness factor. <laughs> no one wants to sit down and do multi-core threading. Um, although you'd think that something like id would do that. Like, id is pretty known for its engine work, and I feel like they would be the type of people to want to do that. But then again, I guess John Carmack's not there anymore, so who knows. Um, Zenco. That actually sounds familiar. Yeah, 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 yeah. I saw these guys at, I think, GDC last year. Um, it's hard to say because... Like... This is kind of an... It, it, it's really weird. It Zenco to me had a like Amazon Lumberyard style feel to it to me. Um, not Not that it's... A bad engine but more like my response to it is just why and i feel like that's a really terrible response to have um because it seems like it's fine there's nothing wrong with it but much like with amazon lumberyard my, my response is just kind of like i don't know what your market strategy is here because unity and unreal are so dominant that it's really hard to convince people to move away from them um although with something like open source development, obviously I would be able to, you know, do stuff that I can't do in Unity right here. Um, yeah, I don't know. Okay, so... What, what else could I do? Um, God, I'm so mad that I can't do context commands inside of Unity. Um, let's see... Uh, let me go to what is it, particle. 
think it's like play particle system playable. There we go. Yeah, let's see if I have any references to this. This is one of the things that I need to clean up today. I didn't really get around to it. Doesn't look like it has any dependencies, so okay. Um I don't know. Oh. oh, is it? I thought that Zenco, like if you go to that page, isn't doesn't it say open source? Yeah, it says open source C sharp game engine. Um <sighs> but yeah. Alright, um I think <laughs> I think we're gonna call this a night. Um We didn't get as much done as I would have liked, but we at least you know, we had, oh, we got an error. I think that's just an internal unity error though. Yeah, okay. Um wait, am I still getting this stuff out? Oh, don't need that, really. Um, or this, really. Can I get away with that, or will it throw a fit if I don't have anything underneath that code? Huh. That's kind of annoying. Um, so, do I need a space? Will that fix it? No. That's really annoying, so I can't just escape to nothing. I have to have it do something. Um disappointment disappointment I guess actually I can change this a little bit so it's not so sloppy I don't like doing go-to's um, so I'm going to go ahead and change this to uh, what is it clip is timeline clip timeline clip target clip is equal to null um, we're going to say let's go ahead and move this out I'm just going to say target clip is equal to clip.current, then we'll break. I'm going to go down here, paste that for now, and then we're going to say inside our while loop here, if target clip is not equal null, break out. Let's go ahead and make sure that that works, and then we'll call it a night. Um, boop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, honestly, I, I feel like the future of game engines is kind of that open source approach. Um, just because, I mean, Unreal's doing it, and it's proving that it's a viable business model. Because um, I feel like that's the that's kind of the big thing that would keep companies away from it is that they would be kind of skittish about their business model about making money. Um, but since Epic is showing that you can have an open source game engine and still make money, um, and obviously the community likes that, the community likes having something that they can actually work with and uh, manipulate themselves if they need to. Uh, let's go ahead and duplicate this. I'm just going to give this a quick test. and fill clip. Okay, so that still works. That's good. So I think we're going to call that a night. I didn't get really much of what I wanted to do tonight, but that was not because of our own fault. Well, my own fault. Part of it, I'm sure it was. Um, but largely, we learned that Unity loves to lock down all of the timeline stuff. Um, yeah, Unreal used to be pretty bad about it. <laughs> but uh, starting with Unreal 4, they were pretty open. Um, back when Unreal 4 cost money to actually use, when it was like 30 bucks a month or something, um, as soon as you signed up for that subscription, you got access to the source code. Uh, so they were they were fairly open as after uh, Unreal 4 came out. But yeah, before Unreal 4 with like UDK, nah, you had to have a million bucks to be able to do anything with that game engine. Um, Okay, so that's a that's a pretty good place to stop for the night. Um, we have context commands for all all clips that are not internal Unity clips, um, with a context command to be able to set them to fill the entire duration of the timeline, and that's nice. Um, I really wish I could make that a context command instead of a a fake context command with custom editors, uh, but. That's the best I can do right now. Um, I'm going to look into this, though, to see if someone else has come up with a better solution, some way to force Timeline to do what you want here. 
Um, because it's it's really annoying that you can't, honestly. Um No, that's true too. The the whole uh Unreal going free, I think was a preemptive strike against Unity five. Uh, cause that's about when it came out. That's about when Unreal 4's free pricing came out was when Unity 5 launched. Um, anyway, so we're going to go ahead and call that quits for tonight. Um, quick announcements, none off the top of my head really. So we'll be back on Saturday. Um, not sure if we'll be doing custom adventure stuff cause I have some cleanup that I need to do. Um, we'll see what we end up doing then, but we should be back on Saturday. So, uh, as always, I want to thank you all very much for watching, and I will see you all next time.